So New York City is offering migrants a free one-way plane ticket to anywhere in the world. Let's talk about that here today on the left wing. I'm Desmond Price of the Independent Thought Podcast, joined by my co-host TJ Whitehead from Power is Taken, Not Given. We're joined by our guests, Trans Bombshell and E.K. Powell. So this is coming out of an article from Politico, and we're going to put this up on the screen here, where Mayor Eric Adams of New York City is ramping up efforts to fly migrants to the the destination of their choice, figuring it's cheaper than sheltering them for months on end and simultaneously warning that those opting to stay in New York may be in for a winter of sleeping outside with shelters full. Uh, he said, when you're out of room, that means you're out of room. Every year, my relatives show for Thanksgiving and they want to all sleep at my house. There's no more room. That's where we are right now. Now, Dispersing them across the nation and world harkens back to when the Democratic mayor ripped Republican governors in Texas and Florida for sending migrants from the southern border to liberal enclaves. But City Hall officials defend their efforts as different because the migrants aren't being coerced to leave. So, TJ, what is your reaction to all of this? Do you stand by Eric Adams here when he says that when you're out of room, you're out of room and that he's definitely not coercing these people to leave? Well, you're not going to believe it, but I'm not in favor of this. This sounds like, uh, you know, very subversive and uh, and incredibly cruel. And there is no difference. And there, there is no difference between what, uh, you know, uh, Greg Abbott and Ron DeSantis did. And what what really gets me is they they complain about the money aspect of it. And yeah. they spend I, I, I looked up like the New York City budget. New York City budget is about one hundred billion dollars every year. And this this program they have is a few billion dollars. And they the the callous nature of the public officials addressing this is what really got me. Because what 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 were we always complaining about when Florida and Texas was doing this? Is that they rounded people up and like in really pernicious ways saying, Oh, hey, you're gonna have housing, you're gonna have a job waiting for you, and they show up and there's nothing. And I guess the only better part of this is that say, Oh, we're going to send you somewhere. There's going to be nothing. I guess they're honest about that. But what what really uh, struck me as especially cruel was they have a 60 day limit uh, for housing for asylum seekers. And uh, this applies to single individuals and it applies to families. So they asked uh, reporters asked the say the city of uh, New York and said, hey, wait a minute. So. Does that mean you're going to be kicking out children out into the street after the 60 days? And uh, Molly Schaefer, the director of the Office of Asylum Seekers, came back with the bulletproof response of, we're still formulating a plan and we'll get back to you on that. They 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 didn't even pretend oh, to have, I, I couldn't believe what I read. And I actually I could after seeing what Eric Adams said with uh his you know genius response of when you're out of room, you're out of room. Like my family comes over Thanksgiving and there's like what are you talking about? It was it was it was truly bizarre. I I, I don't know. Uh uh EK, what, what do you think about all this? I mean, so it's like a convergence of two different problems that we just have in the country. We have a housing crisis and we have like not pass anything about immigration. So, cause I mean, like sending people to a different destination, like it is nothing new. We do that to homeless people all through over the country. Somebody gets a free mm -hmm. Greyhound ticket from, you know, I live in Washington state. So there's plenty of people going from Washington to like Arizona or something like that. And they just get off of that bus and they're like, okay, well, what do I do now? So that's nothing new. And then we have like the, the, the immigration problem where, you know, we've got people coming over and there's really only a few places like that they can go to actually, you know, get any help. Like New York City is actually a really good place for immigrants to go. Like you can speak in, you know, whatever your native language is. If you don't know English, they have a right to shelter. Um, they have that program where they can get like a temporary visa so that they can actually work um, while their asylum um, case is being handled. So like sending them away from that, like. To, to some place where they have no resources, like isn't, you know, is only going to exacerbate the problem, is going to make it somebody else's problem. So like, I don't like it. So it's just those two things like coming together. Like the new thing is they can just pick where they want to go and they go there on a plane instead of a bus, or they might be able to go to another country. 
depending on what their visa situation is. I, I've been sent back from a country because I didn't have the right visa before. So I don't know exactly how it's going to work with, you know, somebody who doesn't have the proper documentation showing yeah. up, you know, after getting off of a plane sent, you know, from, from New York by Eric Adams. Um, but like, until we fix like those things that like a real conversation, like, and, and get some real legislation about what we should do with immigration. Like, I like what, um, we're doing with Venezuelan immigrants, for example, where they get like an 18 month work visa. So there's no like getting paid under the table thing. There's no getting like extra exploited type of thing. You actually have some a piece of documentation that says you can work here. You can do X, Y, Z. You can provide for yourself. Like that's something that we need to like just go ahead and expand out to everyone else who's coming in here like to work for like general purposes. People to come over here, you know, with um. Uh, trying to claim asylum and everything. I mean, if you look at the history, especially with South America, like of all of, you know, the imperialism that our country has done, like the situation that we have put several different countries in over there, there's no, like, it's no surprise. It should be absolutely no surprise that those people are coming here like because this is where all of their stuff is. You know, this is where those t-shirts and other garments that are getting stitched together in, you know, um Honduras and Guatemala. This is where you can buy those t-shirts, you know. This is where you can buy that coffee. You know, you've seen um uh like the videos of like the people from like Ghana that have never tasted chocolate before, even though like that's a, a huge cash crop for them that they're that's, um, that's they're a wild growing thing. and farming out there. Like this is where all of the resources are. So like naturally. Like if I'm, you know, sweating, like out in the fields doing whatever, and, you know, I can't get anything together, I can't provide for myself, and I choose to, you know, take a step to try to provide for me and my family, like, I want to go to where the stuff is that I'm making, you know? Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's just that broken system that we just need to fix and like get a fix for some of these people so they can actually, you know, do, cause like no, nobody's working these jobs. Like no, nobody's stealing these jobs that they're, you know, getting, uh, employed in like that's, that's a huge miss. So like, we need to figure out, just get that solution going for people. That's, that's what I, that's my take on it. I'm not a particularly patriotic person. Um, I don't imagine many leftists are, but I mean, you really, I mean, the, this is so far from what any of us were raised to believe the country was founded on. I mean, these mm. ideals are in direct conflict with things that are inscribed on our national monuments. So it's just absolutely absurd. He was able to get enough support to even have a program like this. Um, like has been pointed out, the other side um, has definitely been trying to do things like this and has gotten a lot of heat for it and so it's absurd that someone that's supposed to be on the like liberal side the progressive side would you know even consider doing this and it just to me points out the greater failures of capitalism and its inability to actually take care of everyone um as was just pointed out you know we caused this problem and this is just sort of us trying to push our you know, our problems into the neighbor's yard um, instead of like taking care of the things that we have caused. And it's just sad because, I mean, human beings are absolutely capable of, you know, contributing to community, you know, if you give them a chance to be embraced. You know, these folks are coming here for opportunity. They're coming to contribute. They wouldn't have, you know, come here not thinking that it would be better. So, it's just sad. Um, these policies are barbaric, to say the least. And mm. it just kind of feels like it's heading in the direction of, you know, global apartheid or, you know, just trying to separate the different economic conditions in a way that, you know, people aren't allowed to go where things are better because they are from where things are worse. And that's just not fair and um, very clear and blatant injustice, in my opinion. You know, there is some pushback happening within New York City. I, I want to read a little clip here from one of the city council members. They said, uh, what we have witnessed from this administration, even if they're not directly saying you've got to get out of here, is that they've consistently created hysteria and chaos and confusion and have not used a tone of inclusivity and welcome. More practically, tracking you know, a migrant's applications for work, uh, authorization or asylum can be impossible once they leave the city's care. 
You know, I want to take a, a moment here to maybe address a question that somebody might have if they're watching this and they're not super in the news or super in the know. When you hear someone say that they are voluntarily giving a plane ticket to somebody, the optics of that say no one's being forced to take this plane ticket. It is up to them whether or not they choose to take this ticket. What if somebody wants to take this ticket? And this is actually a good thing for them. Again, no one's forcing them to take it. So I kind of just want to know where everyone lands on that, because there is a level of insulation here, I would think, for Eric Adams. And, you know, whatever you feel about him and his administration, I think he's going to pull the wool over some people's eyes with, you know, kind of how he got elected and how he's governed. But on this issue specifically, is there really an issue with offering a ticket to somebody like truly t tj do you think that this is actually like a bad thing to do to offer a free plane ticket like, no one's being forced to take it well no one is being forced to take it it's just the the, the circumstances around uh the encouragement of the decision to go on the one-way plane ticket because uh, as we talked about before, uh, there's a limited amount of time they can stay in the shelters and, yep. you know, winter's coming up and it says, OK, well, you can stay outside and freeze or you can hop on a plane to, to Morocco or whatever. Uh, you know, God yep. help you when you get there. And like it's not an altruistic move. Uh, it's it's about it's it's about cutting costs. And uh, like, I mean, and Adams came right out and said it. It's not like he's trying to hide it. Uh, he. He advised every department of the city of New York to cut costs uh, by their budget for their October budget proposal by 5%. And then he wants an additional 5% cut when they review it in January and an additional 5% additional when they review it in April. So it's all about cutting costs and, you know, God forbid you raise taxes or you reallocate funds. No. And this is every department. And, you know, of course, the people that have the, the least amount of money are going to be suffering the most. That, that's kind of how I view it. What, what about you guys? Yeah, it's like, God forbid that, like, housing people should cost the city money. <laughs> oh, like, awful, right? <laughs> like, yeah. like, I mean, yeah. I... In my opinion, I think it's down to who initiates because like if you find someone and say, hey, take this plane ticket, by the way, all this bad stuff will happen if you don't. That's just mm -hmm. simple coercion. Yeah. Um, if you have a program where those people can approach you to request a ticket, that's not. And I think that's very clear. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, I, I haven't really inserted my opinion too much into here so far yet. So when I first found this this piece. Uh, I, you know, I saw it on, you know, ground news, which avid, you know, so, uh, consumer of ground news on Instagram came and found this political article. And when I saw the piece in the political article where it said city hall officials defend their effort as different because migrants aren't being coerced. And I was like, wait, didn't he just say that if they didn't leave, they'd be out in the cold? Like, is that not coercion? <laughs> like, what are we talking about here? I, I, I like laughed at just the, the the hypocrisy of, of it all like just blatant like you're not even hiding the fact that you're being hypocritical the adams administration is astounding to me you know I, I don't live in new york city but it's amazing to me that somebody who is so essentially right wing in so many ways is, could, is. ran as a democrat and won i just it's a little bit unbelievable to me, just the lack of humanity here. And that's what so many of these things really are at the end of the day. Like, is there a problem with the immigration system in this country? Yes. Is this how we're going to fix it? No. It's just, it, it never has been. There's always been a really a clear cut way to deal with it. Uh, administration after administration has not taken it seriously. The policies at the border right now are almost a damn near identical to what they were in the last administration. So whether it's been Biden's policies, Trump's policies, they don't really look that different. Like if you go line by line, they are not that different. And so I, I can't really take any, you know, partisan brain rot, like, you know, Democrats who come in and say that like, oh, well, you know, Trump would have been worse. It's just like, in what way? I mean, because besides family separation, that it's the exact same policies, like line by line. So I think as a country, as a whole, if we truly care about these people, we can't continue to support our politicians, our elected leaders, as they continue to 
just throw out the same failed policy again and again and again and again, and then just blame the other team. This is a nationwide failure, and there has been no real systemic move to change what is essentially a broken system. Yeah. Yeah, it's a two-headed snake. Yeah, it's like the, I mean, blue no matter who is like, it's just, it was it was flawed from the beginning and like, it's just like gotten progressively worse in a way. We're left with the consequences. I mean, we have people now that are spending money funding campaigns, you know, for people that are like ridiculous far right Republicans because they're an easier candidate to beat than actually having to try to present people with, you know, a good option, a reason to vote for you. Like nobody's running on a campaign of I'm going to make sure that we, you know, help restore your worker protections. I'm going right. to help to make sure that we actually solve like the, the housing crisis that we have here. I'm going to like, I'm going to give you this, this, and this. It's like, no, Hey, do you see this dude over here? This dude right here is like crazy. <laughs> like, and I, yeah, actually, I donated $20 million to their campaign. I know how crazy they are. I want to speak to that point really quickly. For those who might not be aware of this, uh, in the last election cycle, Democrats actually went out of their way to fund the campaigns yep. in the primaries of far right like MAGA candidates in the hopes that it would be easier to defeat that candidate in these swing districts in certain parts of the country. And, you know, for the morality of it is atrocious, but I will say, you know, I guess they were right about it. It did work. You, it did work. It did, yeah. it did work. So I, I yeah. guess like, you know, like throw the morality the out the window because I forgot strategically about that it worked. Though. Yeah, it, it worked last time. The one time it did not work is with Donald Trump, which is hilarious. <laughs> I, I have to like, like the worst one ended up winning. Uh, but what uh. Desmond, to what you were talking about is uh, how the, the lack of humanity on this. Well, one, I mean, it's it's I, for one, am am shocked that uh, a former cop like Eric Adams is, is acting so cruel. Like, who, who could have seen that coming? But one thing that uh, I've noticed is that we talk about human rights a lot and human rights. No one really cares about what people actually mm. care about is citizen rights. Citizens get all the protections. And if you're not a citizen, F you like, you know, we we don't have to worry about you. You know, you can't vote for us. You sure as hell can't donate to our campaigns. You might as well not exist. And uh, if you got to cut costs, you got to screw someone over. It's going to be someone who's not a citizen. I mean, we you know, we talked about what's going on in the Middle East and everything. You know, uh, Palestinians aren't citizens. And so, hey, you know, we can do whatever we want to them. So it's a it's 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 a horrible situation. But, you know, we're un unfortunately kind of used to it. Yeah, I mean, it, and my opinion boils down to like, if they don't have a vote that you can sway, like they just don't matter. Mm -hmm. um, and it just further speaks to like this strategy, if you can call it that, that they've used. It's just honestly accelerationism, like just trying to get things so bad that things can change. Mm -hmm. And that never works in the long term. Um, it, it makes things worse. And you just give the win, you know, to the bad guys. And I just think with just like the state of housing and just with the way of everything is, it just shows like when international travel is considered, you know, the way to save money versus providing housing. I think that speaks volumes to just like the crisis that we are in of housing. Like housing is something everyone needs. You need it to survive. It's something everyone should be able to afford. And Back in the day, I don't know anyone ever says this anymore. Your rent's supposed to be like 20% of your income. In some parts of the world, it's even less. I don't know a single person whose rent is like 20% of their income, unless they're some mega rich person. But guess what? I don't know them. Most of the people I know are paying at least half of their income to housing, if not more. And this is not a problem that's going to get better. So the fact that this is the strategy now honestly should be terrifying to everyone and nobody should trust either of the parties that continue to perpetuate this problem that is absolutely the underscore of, of my point yeah, perfect place I mean, to end it yeah also like oh sorry oh sorry <laughs> my bad. um so like a lot of people i mean punitive controls and like you know punitive um or just thinking punitively in general, campaigning on like punishing, 
you know, people for their, you know, situation, like, is a lot more sexy as far as getting people to turn out and vote for it, even though it would actually cut costs to not think punitively and to actually try to come at it from a positive angle and help people out. It's, it's a lot cheaper to actually just like house the people than it is to send them on planes like many studies have proven that yeah because like yeah eric Adams is going to ship how many people out of new york but like you know um ron DeSantis and um what's the uh, dude in texas name is <laughs> i'm blanking greg on greg abbott greg abbott yeah, abbott. Yeah, <laughs> abbott is going to ship, ship more people right back so it's <laughs> not going to fix the problem <laughs> so it, it's just one giant circle it's just and, punting the football <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah so if if you like instead of trying to think of it punitively get these people out of here or and, and come from it of okay people deserve housing people deserve food let's figure out how to pay these people fairly so they can provide for themselves that's way cheaper than everything that we have ever tried before and there are studies that back all of this up yet we still never try that because punitive will get you votes yeah a real leader would create opportunities for those people